these terms like beta male, alpha male. What's the difference between a beta and alpha? If you put 100 men in a room, there's, it's very easy to point to the five or six men every man wishes they was or would like to be more like. And I think that's what an alpha male is. I this is Andrew Tate, a self-proclaimed alpha male who's known to say very outlandish things. Well known for his ideas of masculine superiority and rampant misogyny. If a woman is going out with a man, she belongs to that man. All the roads you see, all the buildings you see, everything around you, men built. Alpha male is a term generally used to refer to men that are dominant among their peers. They are supposedly rich and powerful and desired by women and other beta males look up to them. Alphas are the real men or as beer biceps would say, asli mard. At least that's what most of these self-proclaimed alpha males on the internet will tell you. And they don't shy away from giving you tips on how to be one yourself. This idea is so popular among men in their 20s that there are entire communities of guys that try to learn how to be alpha by watching these videos or even spending tons of money doing things like attending boot camps. And the ideas they learn are often at the expense of the rest of society or even themselves. That's something I'm gonna discuss later on in this video. Young men, especially the ones who want the attention of women, fall into these traps. But is it right to call it a trap if the term alpha comes from research on wolf societies? Hi, my name's Pranav and you're watching Sciences Do. In this video, I wanna examine the term alpha male, where it comes from and is there any science behind it? And towards the end, I wanna talk a bit about the socio-cultural implications of this whole thing. Basel Zoological Garden, Switzerland, 1934. Rudolf Schenkel, a German scientist, was studying wolves because he was interested in their pack dynamics and social interactions. This is what he observed. Wolf packs had a hierarchy. At the top were two wolves, a male and a female, which he called the alpha pair. They were leaders of the pack and enjoyed certain privileges like exclusive mating rights. Below them were what he called the beta and omega wolves, who were constantly in competition with each other to climb up this hierarchical ladder. And sometimes there was even some friction between the alpha and the beta to again become alpha and whoever won became the new alpha. These observations were made over a period of eight years and obviously Schenkel had a lot of data supporting these ideas. So he published his observations on a paper called Expression Studies in Wolves. And with that, the term alpha wolf was born to refer to the most dominant wolves in a pack. But this was an obscure paper in a random science journal. So how did the term catch on? Michigan 1960, David Meech, a biologist motivated by Schenkel work carried out his own research on wolves. He borrowed the same terms used by Schenkel and compiled his observations in a book called the Wolf. Not a very creative name, but this book became mildly popular and the term alpha wolf entered popular culture. And over the years, whenever scientists observed social hierarchies in animals, they used the terms alpha, beta, omega, etc. One example is this book on alpha behavior in chimpanzees called Chimpanzee Politics. A much more creative name for a book. In addition to discussing alpha chimps, he also highlighted how Chimps are similar to humans in many respects. And people jumped on this. If chimpanzees shared similarities with humans, then maybe humans also had alphas. And being alpha meant being dominating. The word was used left, right and center to describe human interactions. Business, politics, sports, nothing was spared. And people wanted to be the alpha. There was glory in being the alpha. You'd be dominant in your sport. You'll do really well professionally. You'll have access to all kinds of resources and most importantly, the women will find you irresistible. And how do you be the alpha? You have to do what the alpha wolves do. Take what's yours. You have to be the bully. You have to be ruthless. And in return, you get success everywhere you go. Your professional life and your love life. And this craze of trying to be alpha did not spare anyone. Not even US presidential candidates. Al Gore versus George Bush election of 2000. During this election, a story broke out claiming Al Gore, the Democratic nominee, had hired a consultant to help him be the alpha male in the election. News channels ran segments on this with outrageous headlines, each having their own interpretation of what an alpha was and how Al Gore wasn't one. One striking example was that because Al Gore was loyal to his wife and a pretty decent man, he could not be an alpha male. And I don't think losing the election helped his case either because being alpha meant being the winner 
and he just wasn't. The term alpha soon became popular over the years, especially with the rise of the internet. Today, if you search alpha male on social media, you'll get a ton of results. Books, videos, podcasts, reels and whatnot. This topic seems to be everyone's favorite. And it's perfectly justified, right? I mean, there's a ton of scientific evidence to back this up, right? Actually, this story has a twist. In, it. in the years following the observation on wolves, David Meech and other researchers realized that they'd made a big mistake. After publishing his book, David Meech continued his research and observations on wolves. But this time, he looked beyond zoos into the vast wilderness. Wolves not in captivity, but in their natural habitats. He observed that wolf packs in the jungle had an alpha pair, but they were... Parents. A wolf pack consisted of parents and their offspring. The parents were the leaders and their children followed them. There was no competition among the children to become the alpha. The alphas dominated them just like parents would discipline a child. The parents did the hunting while the children observed and learned. And when they grew up, they separated from the groups and formed their own with their partner. And this cycle would continue over generations. This was completely different from what was observed in wolves in captivity. Here's Meech himself describing what he learned. The term alpha is, um, isn't really accurate. It implies the wolves fought and um, competed strongly to get to the top of the pack. In actuality, the way they get there is merely by mating with a member of the opposite sex, uh, producing a bunch of offspring, which are the rest of the pack then. Parents of all animals discipline their children, and to an onlooker, it may look like domination. So a better term to call them would be the breeding pair. So why did wolves in zoos behave differently? Well, the wolves in zoos are usually kept in a confined space. There'll usually be limited resources and because of this, there'll naturally be infighting and competition amongst them. The presence of an alpha was a characteristic of their living condition, not of wolf societies themselves. Observations of wolves in zoos should not be used to conclude things about wolves in general. Why wolf packs are better models for this? Because they don't face the same constraints. So what did Meech do? He immediately began damage control by writing a letter to his publishers telling them to stop printing his book. New evidence had just invalidated the contents of what he had written. Good guy Meech. What he lacked in book naming skills he made up for in academic honesty. But unfortunately, it was of no use. The publishers refused because the books were selling really well. So they decided to keep the book in print. In fact, you can buy it right now if you wanted to. Just open up Amazon and search for the book. Scary to think what other lies must be floating around like this, right? Okay, so now we know that alpha males don't really exist. So we should stop using this term, right? Not really. You see, observations on wolves apply, well, only to wolves. There's no reason to believe they apply to all animals. After this discovery, researchers went back and re-examined their research. Do dominance hierarchies actually exist? in other animals? The answer is that they exist in some animals and in others they don't. Wolves, for example, do not have a dominance hierarchy. Bees, on the other hand, have a hierarchy in their societies. Primates like chimpanzees show strong dominance hierarchies, whereas others like murukwi monkeys and hamadreus baboons don't show these hierarchies. There is no general rule for whether an animal has a hierarchy or not. But even in animals like chimpanzees, an alpha male is not what we imagine it to be. Let's assume you're the alpha chimpanzee in a group and you're the strongest of them all. So what do you do? Easy, right? You just give instructions to your subordinates and if they don't listen, you beat them up. After all, you're the strongest. You can make others work for you and live happily ever after. It doesn't work like that. You see, chimpanzee societies are highly complex. They're very adept at forming coalitions with each other and dealing with problems. This book is called Chimpanzee Politics for a reason. Imagine you're being dominating and aggressive which is a problem, so what will happen? A group of chimps will come together and rebel against you. They will kick you out and replace you with another alpha. You can't deal with them all at once, can you? And that's exactly what scientists have observed. 
alpha males who tend to be too dominating are disliked by the group and are eventually overthrown a successful alpha is one who is not dominating and who is generous and empathetic to others an example of this is solving conflicts when two chimpanzees fight it's observed that successful alphas get between the two parties and calm them down both parties avoid harm and form a good opinion of the alpha but how does one become alpha in the first place scientists have observed that when a chimp wants to become an alpha he doesn't just go beat up the current alpha that's a sure recipe for disaster instead he'll go making friends with other chimps first slowly and steadily he improves his social status by sharing food by being empathetic and social with his allies this whole process can take months but once he feels he has attained enough social stature he goes after the alpha position so unlike what these people might tell you being an alpha is not about being dominating or being a bully being generous and having the ability to form the right coalitions play a far greater role and being the alpha comes with certain costs scientists have found that alpha males are more likely to have high stress levels they usually tend to age faster and have a shorter life span compared to others and this makes sense after all being the alpha is a difficult job and comes with a lot of responsibilities they have to keep the group happy break up fights patrol the territory and also defend the group against external attacks in addition to all this they have to constantly be looking behind their back for other chimpanzees waiting to take the spot as the alpha one wrong step and they'd be replaced contrary to what many people say being an alpha is a tough job but this is all in chimpanzees what about humans do we have an alpha among us Human societies are far more complex than chimpanzees or any other animal for that matter. There are no universal alphas because we are part of multiple communities each having different dynamics. Skills required to succeed in one group or community or profession do not necessarily imply success in others. Let's take an example. Imagine a weightlifter. He might dominate in his sport but put him in an office setting and he might do poorly just because you are dominant or you're an alpha in one place doesn't mean you are in another but what about in the context of dating aren't alphas would women prefer actually that's a good question a study try to evaluate just that they want to understand whether women prefer dominant men or submissive men 118 women were given two descriptions of hypothetical person john in one description john was a highly competitive tennis player who dominated his opponents In the other John was a non-competitive player who got dominated by his opponents. They asked women who they preferred and the clear winner was the dominant John. But this only shows that women prefer alphas, right? This is where research needs to be more nuanced before drawing conclusions. Otherwise you just end up in fallacies like this black and white fallacy. So here's what researchers did. They gave both Johns five different qualities that show dominance or submission. And now instead of rating the two Johns, they were asked to rate each quality if their romantic partner were to have it. And this is where things get interesting. Women like confidence and assertiveness in their partners while disregarding aggressive, demanding and dominating behaviors. And on the submissive side, they liked easygoing and sensitive traits while disregarding the others. They didn't like all the qualities perceived in a traditionally dominant or non-dominant man. They decide only a few. The man they found most attractive like somewhere here in the middle. But are women more attracted to alpha males sexually? Actually, that's not true. When it comes to romantic partners, life partners or sexual partners women always preferred the intermediate man if you don't believe me my sources are in the description and this makes sense right i mean who would want to be with a selfishly dominating and aggressive partner but unfortunately there are whole groups of influencers influencing young men uh, into believing all this nonsense and getting them to behave in ways that they normally wouldn't and i unfortunately have some experience with this When I was a young guy and I was having trouble getting the attention of women, I would fall into this rabbit hole of content on YouTube. These sorts of videos would be everywhere. Content revolving around picking up women followed by these boot camps that teach you how to pick up women. These people call themselves pickup artists or sometimes the media friendly term male dating coaches. It took me a while to realize that this content is extremely toxic. The ideas they tell you include alpha males and male 
many others that feature a lot of misogyny and they often teach you psychological manipulation and their target audience is always young cisgendered heterosexual men back then i would often ignore these red flags of misogyny because i kind of wanted the outcome they were selling which was success with women and we often say this on this channel whenever you desperately want something there are scammers looking to take advantage of you now i know many people in my audience might also be heading into this trap and this video is for them what they need is our support and means by which they can improve themselves and that should include things like therapy and workshops on confidence and genuine help with dating not these scammers that teach you misogyny and manipulation and run boot camps that cost thousands of dollars and just like religion ideas like these can lead to not only harmful ideologies that people believe blindly but also unpleasant outcomes one such outcome is the incel movement the word incel is short for involuntary celibate men who are lonely and unable to find love and the incel movement started as a group to help and support such men men could speak out about their problems and have people listen to them have discussions creating a healthy community wait that doesn't sound so bad does it it isn't but what was a healthy space soon turned into a movement hijacked by misogynists that blamed women for their problems men couldn't find love because women were at fault this became their rallying cry and if you think women are the only ones affected by this you're wrong these ideas create an unreasonable standard for men to achieve failing which they are looked down upon resulting in it affecting these men's mental health and i think we should recognize it wherever it happens and speak out against it the internet today is not a cesspool of terrible ideas like these wherever people seriously buy into these ideas they are often made fun of with memes like the giga chad and the sigma male and people like andrew tate have been banned off of social media as of the making of this video but unfortunately there are young men that still fall prey to these ideas not to mention there is a lot of misunderstanding around these ideas because a lot of them are often arrived at by misrepresenting science consider the bonobos for example just like the chimpanzees they share 98% of their dna with humans they have a matriarchal society with an alpha female if alpha behavior in chimpanzees is extended to men then why don't we see alpha behavior in bonobos extended to women it's because the people who perpetuate these ideas are less interested in science and more in what validates their own belief systems and this is a sign of a bigger problem the problem of science words being used out of context to suit their own agenda i've spoken about this in many of my videos feel free to check out my channel Content like this is expensive to make so if you do like it I'd appreciate if you support me on Patreon buy me a coffee or YouTube memberships if you like this video then you might also like this one I did on a YouTuber who promotes scams around the idea of spirituality I'll see you in the next one till then remember science is dope